just want to like slow down a little bit and like chill. I, I love think, that. For I you. think that's kind of my goal. But I think I need to do the opposite of slow down because your girl's getting real comfortable with being a homebody. <laughs> I'm getting a little boring. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, have to spice, we have to spice you up a little bit. It's, it's yeah, good for I need content. Some spice. Some spice. Some spice. <laughs> but I also need money. <laughs> Guess who's back? Back, back again. again. <laughs> Shady's back. Tell a friend, guess who's back, guess who's... Hey, guys, welcome back to another episode of Drinks After Work with your hosts, Shannon and Abby. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> welcome back. Happy 2022. Happy freaking New Year. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. Oh, my God, ew. I love that. Ew, I love, love that for us. Love that for us. Um, If you guys are new here, I hope you're new. I hope we have new listeners for the love of God. Um, <laughs> follow us on social media. It's at drinks after work underscore on Insta at drinks after work. No underscore on TikTok. And if you are a girl in the Boston area looking for new friends, looking for things to do, new things, fun events, all the above, join our private Facebook group. It's linked in our Insta bio or you can just search drinks after work boston baddies boston baddies i'm so happy that we crawled out of the hole that we've been in for the past two weeks we haven't recorded we've been taking some much needed time off we'll kind of explain why in a second mm -hmm. things get a little dirty but <laughs> um it's it's good we got to enjoy the holidays but honestly i just had like ptsd the whole time like not recording i feel like i get very very anxious and like upset and annoyed so i'm happy to be here yay I feel like I don't know how to talk, so bear with me oh, this episode. Okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be great feeling for you. Feeling a little shy. She's feeling shy. <laughs> Abby's kidding. feeling a little bit insecure. Um, always, always insecure. However, <laughs> I'm a Cosmo drinking bitch now. You so. are. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I've been waiting for this moment for our whole friendship. And, and here you are. Not only just Cosmo drinking, but dirty martini drinking. What do you think? like did this for you um so new year's eve i went out to dinner with mystery man uh -huh. very low-key and um i had one drink so naturally i was fucked up always and then <laughs> no it's always when you get to like the three-fourths mark and all of a sudden you, I don't <laughs> you start know. like flinging silverware and i'm like oh there uh, she is there she is yeah was. mama's back <laughs> i don't know what it was that possessed me to order a cosmo but i literally kept going back and forth if anyone knows me personally you know how indecisive i am and mr man was ordering dirty martinis and i tried his and i liked it and i was like oh shit my freaking palate is changing this oh. is who is is she but so i was like wait i kind of want to order a cosmo should i do it and he was like yeah he's like, and i, I literally like, don't give a fuck <laughs> i couldn't give a less of a shit and but you're I like did. but babe like should i do like are you kind of feeling this and he's like i don't care oh god he was like i guess i'm driving home tonight i was like damn straight you are <laughs> <laughs> I ordered it and I liked it and I sent a picture to Shannon because I was missing her while she was in Scottsdale. Scottsdale. Yeah, that was very cute of you. Even though I was a little offended, I'm like, bitch, I've been trying to get you to drink these for so long and like now you do it when I'm not there. But still very, very happy. Now we can watch Sex in the City together and drink Cosmos. We'll get drinks after work and I'll get a Cosmo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that wasn't what I was referring to though when I said that you were insecure. <laughs> Oh, why so, am I insecure? I'm insecure for a lot of reasons. To preface this, two weeks ago, the last time we recorded, mm -hmm. we had a whole segment about the holidays, Christmas, New Year's, how people started to feel a little down and depressed because they're like, wait, like I don't have these crazy huge Christmas plans or maybe I just you know lost a loved one or maybe I moved to a new city and I'm feeling a little alone and not happy. And we were like, don't put all this pressure on yourself during Christmas time to make it the most wonderful time of the year and be happy all the time. Well, it's not. I will say that I genuinely believe that Abby and I had two of the worst <laughs> <laughs> weeks before Christmas ever. So if you want to feel um, better about yourself, then keep on listening, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I, so I had the stomach bug and it was not COVID. It was a 24 hour stomach bug. <laughs> and it wasn't just any bug. No. <laughs> it wasn't your average run of the mill. No, this little bug was a little bitch. <laughs> little bitch bug. Little bitch. <laughs> And so, <laughs> so I spent a lot of time with mystery man this week and we caught the stomach bug. Um, so not really days before Christmas, right? 
I think we got it Christmas Eve. Okay. I Christmas think, Eve. I think. Not sure. Um, Because literally the next day we both started feeling ill. And so we stayed home Christmas Day. I didn't go home for Christmas and it was really sad. But what's even more sad <laughs> is what happened next. And literally... So I, okay, trigger warning if you don't like throwing up and all the above, um, <laughs> just skip a, like a minute. Um, so both ends, okay? Yeah. Coming out both ends. And, you know, I'm spending, I'm at Mr. Man's house and I feel like most girls are like, oh, girls don't poop. Like, da, da, da. no, I make sure his bathroom is stocked with poopery because- <laughs> because it's like the right thing to do it is it's yeah. the responsible thing to do yeah and, and you're and like a grown-up so and dude wipes gotta have dude wipes <laughs> um and so yeah I'm throwing up <laughs> and um I'm also the other end is coming out and um I guess I used one too many dude wipes and I I clogged the toilet and and I didn't just clog the toilet um See, I flushed and it didn't go down. So I flushed again and all of a sudden a fucking tsunami comes up out of the toilet and his like bathroom an floor, his bathroom floor has the entire surface of his bathroom floor has like an inch of water. I start screaming his name. I'm like, oh my God. I was freaking out. So literally clogged the toilet, made it overflow and... I wasn't done. I wasn't done. So I'm... Didn't he like go in there like clean everything? Oh, he, oh, he took care of it. He took care of it. So I go to the other bathroom because I wasn't done. <laughs> You're like, my work is not finished. <laughs> I was not done. <laughs> I must tell the world. It was so bad. I lived in the bathroom that day. <laughs> but then I go back to the bathroom <clears throat> and I'm throwing up. And I don't know if this, this is honestly almost happened to me while drunk and not with a stomach bug. So I, maybe it's just a me problem. Yeah, but maybe I'm, it's just like your party truck. Um, I shit the floor. Okay. <laughs> I was throwing up and I shit on the floor. I'll say it. It, it, it was right one of after those, you just clogged the toilet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I cleaned that one up, but, um, oh it was a very traumatizing day. Um, I never want to get the stomach bug again. I always used to joke about how oh, I want the stomach bug. Let me lose 10 pounds. And Did not lose 10 pounds <laughs> and I lost all dignity. So like not worth the experience. Not worth the experience. Do not recommend oh, to a friend. My I, God. It, it, I think it brought us closer you, though. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe. Because he still, he still loves me. So. so if you're like, you know, fighting with your boyfriend, you guys are on the outs, just like shit on his floor <laughs> and see how he reacts and it might make you, it might bring you together. Yeah. Yeah. And and if and if you're wondering why didn't why didn't you just sit on the toilet with a bucket, um I wasn't in my right mind, okay? Yeah, you just you it just I was I was flipping back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. And you know, she was doing like fucking another. like flips and like splits <laughs> and like like doing acrobats on the toilet and it just it didn't the cards uh, just didn't fall where they were supposed to. No, they didn't. It happens to all of us. And you were you were down bad too. Um yeah, I spent my week before Christmas um after I got a nose job, uh high on pain meds, not knowing what I was saying, um, just like basically like trying to pronounce words unsuccessfully. I like couldn't really drink, which was a bummer. I would watched every single Christmas movie, The Princess Switch, Night Before Christmas, The Princess Switch 2, The Princess Switch 3, switched again. I literally was like losing my fucking mind. And it kind of like made me realize the true meaning of Christmas. Yeah, that know? sounds like the lowest production movie you could have <laughs> picked. Yeah, it wasn't great. I just like had, I felt, I just was sitting there like so uncomfortable and I was just like, wow, like this literally sucks, but it's I okay. I don't know if you remember texting me and sending me photos of you and your, your cast, but maybe one day if definitely. we're feeling spicy, we'll post them. Yeah, I definitely don't remember <laughs> that. And it was like wicked funny because I kept getting like calls from people who were working and like I took the week off intentionally because I was like, I'm not going to be okay. And we were actually supposed to record. Like I mm -hmm. remember like two days after we were supposed to record and I texted Abby that morning and I was like, I don't even know how to talk. Like I, I don't... <laughs> Like, I don't think I can record it in a podcast. Like, I don't know what I would say. Like, I don't think I'd have anything good. <laughs> you would have just sat there drooling. Yeah, just literally Maybe drooling. it would have made for good content. It, it might have. We was, needed the week off. We needed the week it was, off. It was an abrupt. We didn't know that we weren't ending the year with an episode. But Sorry okay. about that, guys. It won't happen again next year. Hopefully next year I don't. 
I'm not recovering from surgery and Abby doesn't um, shit the floor and get food poisoning. And then maybe we'll have a Christmas slash New Year's episode. But Probably not. It wasn't in the cards. New um, year, new nose. You look fabulous. Oh, thank you. Well, we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, but in addition to that, you you just kind of chilled, right? Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't really do anything. It's kind of nice, though. I feel like that's nice. Mm-hmm. So you probably feel so like refreshed. I kept trying to. So Mr. Man and I are going away this weekend, um, skiing. Just him and I, and I finally got a ski lesson. How did it go? Do you know? No, I'm I'm going this weekend. Oh. The ski, but all of our Christmas break, because I was off the entire week from Christmas to New Year's. It is like no one is working or something no. because I couldn't. We tried every single mountain on my epic pass trying to get me a ski lesson. Booked. Booked, really? booked, booked. I, It's probably my fault for waiting until the last minute. But yeah, tried to go skiing, but couldn't. But finally, we're going this weekend. That is like, I still don't get it because he's such a good ski. Like he's he a, refuses to teach me. He refuses. Like he's amazing. I feel like he'd be a good mm-hmm. teacher. And he just is like, no. No, he said if he taught me, I'd end up crying. That's true. <laughs> no, that's actually my dad. Love my dad, like sweetest person in the world. But like he taught me how to ski. And like, I, I honestly don't blame him because I think if and when I have children someday, I'm not going to be the most patient mother. I don't <laughs> think. But like we would be going down the mountain and like wouldn't listen to what he was saying. And he was just like, drop, like bend your knees. And I was like, stop yelling at me. And I'd be like crying. <laughs> and it was like very horrific, but I became a good skier because of it. So yeah. Yeah, he's very much tough love, and I don't need that when I'm skiing because I'm like, already don't terrified. Emotionally. He also gave you a new name, so I'm really proud of this. And I, I, okay, let me know, guys, what you think of this. So I don't know. It was right in front of us for all these years. He started calling Abby Gail, and I was like, oh, my God, you're such a fucking Gail. No, I'm not. <laughs> we're going, we were just booked, we're booking, in the process of booking a trip to Miami, and we're all in this, like, group chat of, like, 20 people, and he replies, and he goes, Gail and I are in, and I was like, that's the best thing I've ever read in my life, because <sighs> you're just, like, not a Gail. I'm not. So that just makes it so funny. One of his friends started <laughs> calling me Gail, and it just <laughs> stuck, and I, I don't mind when other people call me it, but when Mystery Man calls me it, I want to Because he's, like, your boyfriend. Yeah, it's weird. He's like, get over here, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Stop. How is Scott's sale? I'm oh, really sad I didn't come. I know. I know. Well, I'm really sad. Yeah. The flights were like a thousand dollars though. Yeah. We didn't plan that well. We we decided like <laughs> nine months ago, we all wanted to, and yeah. Abby was supposed to come. We were all going to go to Scottsdale and we were like, well, flights are like, you know, 600 bucks. We'll wait. They'll definitely go down. They all of a not. sudden it's like 1700, 1800, like $2,500. And we were like, we made a huge mistake. So <laughs> a huge half, mistake. half the trip didn't end up coming, but honestly uh. it was very fun. I highly recommend it. It was, it was just like a good place to go. Like it had like a Miami vibe. It's like vibe. a party, party city. Yeah. Like I think that, so what I've been told at least is that the best time to go to Scottsdale is probably spring. So mm. they say like right around probably like March, April, May, like that's peak season. And if you're looking for like pool party type vibes, that's when you should go to Scottsdale because it gets really hot. Like 80s. Too damn hot. Yeah, like, like a little, 100. a little too hot, and like they have like the pool parties going, and it's very like Vegas, very Miami type vibes, um, because they have a lot of like day clubs there, and like a lot of bars slash day clubs, like that's kind of their vibe over there. When we went, it was nice, but it was definitely like sixties, so it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't warm enough to swim. So none of us really swam except for my friend Ashley. The last day, we were all, all a little hungover, and she just jumped in the pool because she was like, maybe this will help. I don't know. And I, I feel like, like it would help. Um, it did. She actually, she had a little Felt spring a little of life better. to her afterwards, but it was a fun place to go. Um, I genuinely loved it. I thought it was like the perfect, like you could do like relaxing things and have a nice time, but also still go out and party. Mm-hmm. And we also got like a pretty dope Airbnb. It was beautiful. Oh my God, was so sick. what was your high and low of the trip? <sighs> okay. So I, for highs, honestly, there was a lot of highs. Honestly, my favorite thing was I always like the unplanned because yeah, my boyfriend Michael is a planner. He plans like the whole trip out, which is always fun. And we went to this restaurant, Taco Madero or wherever, where did we go? Toco Madero? Yeah. I think. Yeah. That place, if you're going to Scottsdale, you have to go. Like it is like the coolest place ever. They have like trapeze artists on the stage and like f- drinks that set on fire. And it's like very like restaurant like kind of lounge vibes and you could just go there with a group of people and just get annihilated and just have Mm. the best time. And everyone's like dressed super bougie. So that was definitely a high. My other high was just like, we had this one day where after brunch, we just kind of like explored the um, like old town area where all like the shopping and the bars are. We just like went 
to a bunch of different like boutiques went shopping and the boutiques were like offering us drinks there yeah they're which smart is so genius like if i ever open up a boutique i'm letting the patrons drink because we all spent money there because we we're like this is fun um and we just had like the best day and we ended up going to this place el jefe's which is a kind of clubby bar and we were there for like four hours mm -hmm. and it was just a blast that was a high a low is definitely waking up new year's morning um in my pajamas wrapped in a blanket on the grass outside that was definitely an interesting experience for me you slept outside um, i don't think i slept outside i might have just woken up at like four in the morning oh went outside God. but it was it was memorable and i did take my makeup off and i did wow. brush my teeth so i consider it a win and i think the near was rung in in like a good way yeah okay oh another high was also the last night we were there me and my friend ashley literally finished like a double bottle of wine after we were out all day stay up till 3 30 in the morning while watching emily in paris Aww. so that was fun what's a double bottle of wine is that two bottles well you know like the big <laughs> bottles and there's the small bottles i don't know okay. like you know like when you're in college i should know this you know when you're in college and someone brings over like the big bottle yeah that's, yeah I, maybe okay. it's not called a double maybe that's just what i call it <laughs> i don't freaking know i'm not the girl to ask oh but in and out oh yeah you have you ever had in and out no okay i don't eat meat so i have no desire that's to go. true because they only they don't even have like a veggie burger that was kind of like are a, the fries good because i would go if the fries are good the fries are pretty good i don't know what it is you know me i'm not a big fast food girl you're not i am i was like we have to go to in and out because that's what you do and we want to like look cool and whatever so we <laughs> all go to in and out i had a bite of this burger and it was like the first time that spongebob took a bite of a krabby patty it was like the best experience of my life and i became so obsessed and i made michael go back the next day with me and he was very happy because obviously <laughs> michael, michael loves fast loves. food he yeah. was like oh my god he's like this is so great like shannon likes fast food i couldn't stop eating it and like, well, thinking good thing about you don't it. live on the west coast i but i'm so depressed like all day today i'm just sitting here and i'm like i can't believe there's no in and out in freaking boston <laughs> So if you guys know like an equivalent of in and out on the East Coast, let me know. Actually, maybe don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you don't. Well, I'm glad you had a good New Year's. I hope everyone listening did as well. Um, do we, you know, what do we feel about New Year's resolutions? I feel like either you have them or you don't. You love them or you hate them. Yeah. I feel like there's like two types of people. Like, there's the people that gung-ho make the resolutions mm -hmm. and the people that are like fuck that i'm kind of embarrassed that <clears throat> i literally just signed up for a gym um <laughs> like two days ago still it's like such a cliche i still haven't gone but like it was they were having like a new year deal and i was like oh these fuckers probably think i'm joining because it's the new year and new year new me no 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 we're going to miami in two months that's, that's why, why i joined why. but i was like oh i bet they think that's why because i feel like <laughs> so people... you're sitting here worrying about what the gym people who got your membership application are thinking of you <laughs> <laughs> yeah no oh yeah that's why i haven't gone because i literally I have such bad social anxiety that I don't want to go, but I have to go because your girl is not going to Miami. Is it, this, is it mm. the same gym that Mystery Man joined? No. No, because he won't let you. I was literally going to say there's no way in hell he wants you to He wants to go to the gym with you because I feel like boys get weird about that um, shit. Um, no, he just pays a lot of money for his gym. Uh, so I was okay. like, nah, I'm good because well, I'm going to bail after March. <laughs> I know when Michael, in, in college, Michael was always like, I don't want to go to the gym with my girlfriend. Like, that's not cool. I was like, okay. <laughs> well, we have this little joke that I'm like, oh, so like, how's your gym girlfriend? Like every time he comes back from the gym, I'm like, how's your gym girlfriend? I was like, the, uh, now now that I have a gym membership, so it's Planet Fitness, <laughs> $10 a month. I'm literally just doing it so I can do cardio. But I was like, mm, so I'm going to go get a gym boyfriend. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm really worried about the Planet Fitness guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm, like, I'm dating yeah. a 50-year-old man named Bob. Because <laughs> honestly, Planet Fitness doesn't have like really any weights or anything so there's really no reason to join planet fitness unless you're you want to do all the cardio machines because they're yeah their weight room is or if you're joke. like in high school so like yeah. maybe you could get like a high school boyfriend yeah. you know i wanted Cute. to to go along with the gym boyfriend thing but he's just unfazed you have to join equinox and he'll start to sweat Ugh. we'll get worried Ugh. <laughs> yeah i feel like people to go pay. to equinox to find love like i don't think any fucking person out there goes to equinox being like oh i think i'm just gonna go work out no everyone's like i want to go meet like a hot girl or a hot guy and wait that's not a bad no i think about it if you're not single a bad idea. and you're listening and you don't want to be single anymore just join a really expensive gym what it's is it so true either equinox or is it lifetime no equinox is the most expensive i know but lifetime's pretty up there I really think. Mm -hmm. oh i know like la fitness is like decent like pretty expensive 
But like Equinox and Seaport, I feel like the people that go there, it's like money. They're, yeah, you there's got like money. It's like there's like the new money aesthetic. <laughs> Keyword new, new money. <laughs> Definitely. Um, let us know if that works, guys. It's only going to cost you like find love at fucking three hundred dollars a month. But just uh. like don't eat out for like three months and just go to Equinox instead. <laughs> It'll be worth it because all the guys will be taking you on dates. <sighs> new Year's resolution. So I don't. Okay. So here's the thing. I don't hate it, but it's more about the mindset to me than it is about what it is. So there's some people that are like New Year, New Me, like time to reinvent myself. And if you're if your mindset like going into life is every year, like when the calendar year changes over, you're going to reinvent yourself and become someone else. Like, are you a fucking chameleon? Like that's stupid. I, <laughs> I don't think that anyone should try to become a new person every single year. I also don't think you should wait until the end of the year to like decide, Oh, I'm going to be a better person this year. Like just fucking do that when, when you're being shitty. I don't know. Um, I agree. I don't have any new year's resolution. Is a resolution and a goal the same thing? So that's what I was going to say. I think like if you are in the mindset of like, I want to have goals to accomplish Mm -hmm. this year. I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I just don't like the whole fake, like this year I'm going to be like my most authentic self. Like what the fuck does that mean? Like, Mm -hmm. what does that actually mean? Like, are you not being your most authentic self anyways? And like, what is that even, what, who even are you? Who are, who is any of us? You know, (laughs) I, I I see, I see your point. I think it's extremely valid. You shouldn't wait for the new year to start living a healthier life or whatever it is, but I do have some goals for okay. 2022. What are your goals? Um, to be my most authentic. <clears throat> Ew, no. <laughs> um, I want to reach a hundred K downloads Ooh. by 2023. We surpassed 20 K recently. So, you know, 80 K more to go. 80 K more to go. We can do it. I'm, do I'm it. aiming high this year. Okay. So share with your friends, this podcast and your mom's, and your moms and tell your moms to share with her friends. Yes. Yes. I actually had my, one of, I didn't tell you this one of, um, so I went to a wedding with Michael and it was a family friend's wedding. Mm-hmm. It was one of his mom's like friends, friends came up to me and said, she listens. <laughs> friends, friends, friends. Yeah. And she, said Wait, she, she listens. How does she find out? I think from us like posting it or oh, some, some, okay. someone posting it. I don't know, but Love I was that. like, yeah, cool. So anyways, yeah. Tell, tell your friends and their friends, friends and your aunts and your uncles and your moms. I also think we need to TikTok more. So that's another goal. That's definitely a I goal. I think we currently post zero <laughs> times per week. So I'm going to start <laughs> slow and say we need to start posting once per week. <laughs> Since we currently post zero times, I think I, th- I think just posting it all would really just be a lot. We're aiming for the sky this year, guys. No, it is true, though, because I feel like TikTok is like a platform that basically everyone uses. It's in the, the secret to success. And we never use it. And we're always like, we really should do it. And we just don't. I know. <laughs> it's like, I wish I cared. Uh. Um, yeah. No, I think that's a good one. I also think my, this is something I started like, what, f- three or four months ago, but to slow it down. Just to slow life down a little bit. Yeah. I say that as we're planning a trip to Miami in two months, but like not, so like going on less trips. I know that sounds really stupid, but. Do you have anything in the roster that I don't know about? No, literally I was invited to go to travel somewhere in January. And I literally said no. Where? Because, um, to North Carolina because Michael oh. was going to go. And I said no. I was like, I can't. Like I have, yeah. I've made a promise to myself. Like I need to just like chill a little bit because. This past year was really freaking fun. Don't get me wrong, but it was just so much to the point where I felt like I didn't even know like where I was half the time or like what day it was. And I was People living listening of, are probably like, oh, poor you. I know. I know. It's, it's a classic like bragging. No, I like, know. I sh- it, it's not supposed no, to come off as bragging. It, it can be too I, much. Yeah. Like I know like how like privileged and like I am to travel and stuff. And it's honestly so amazing. I think what I started realizing though is just like the living like out of like suitcases all the time and just feeling a little like disconnected I also think my mom made this point like if you do less things I feel like you kind of value them a little bit more you yeah. know what I mean so we were kind of like oh wow like this is so she was like do you even remember like certain moments because they're all just kind of combobulated so I just want to like slow down a little bit and like chill I, I love think, that for I you. think that's kind of my goal but I think I need to do the opposite of slow down because your girl's getting real comfortable with being a homebody <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a little boring <laughs> Yeah, no, we, have spice, we have to spice you up a little bit. It's yeah, good for I need content. Some spice. Some spice. Some spice. <laughs> but I also need money. <laughs> we'll we'll uh. get there. Okay. Drunk deets. Um Drunkity Wunkities. Okay. Everyone and their mom already knows the 
tacky public apology oh. that that our boy Tristan, Tristan T. Thompson. Oh, Tristan T. He is What the is father. there to say about the father? He's confirmed <laughs> the father to um, baby mama Marley Nichols. We talked about this a couple weeks, months ago. I don't know. Time yes. is flying. Um, but he did take a paternity test. The child is his. And he took it to his Instagram story to make a public apology to Chloe. And I just thought... <laughs> okay, so there's, some, like, there's like so many layers to this. So I don't know if you guys remember, but like Ivy said, like a few months ago, Tristan was in some sort of like a legal battle qualm issue thing with his, what um, claimed to be his baby mama, um, mm-hmm. saying that he fathered a child. And his whole thing was he was like, listen, if I take a paternity test and I am in fact the father, I will take full responsibility. But up until then, like stop with the, he kind of called it like, I think she, he, he said that she was like defaming him and all this stuff. And he's like, stop with the defamation. If I am the father, I will admit to that. But until you have that proof, I'm not going to be like sitting here taking ownership. Right. It's kind of what he said, which I think he kind of had a point a little bit. Like, you know, until you actually know, um, I don't think you should a hundred percent take that ownership, but right. it just came out that he is in fact the father. And I think he probably feels like he's like a good person by being like, okay, so now that this is confirmed, I would hundred percent take responsibility. Like I will amicably, you know, raise this child, my son, like all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, no, like no one's reading this being like, wow, like Good what a guy, you. like he kept his word. Like he's going to be a dad to this, like, <laughs> no. And then the fact that he's like, wait, what did he say? That was so fucking funny about Chloe. Like it was like just insulting. Oh, I don't remember. He literally says, there's like a line in his apology, which he posts on his story, which I'm like, it's so like, okay. Talk about airing dirty laundry. But it was like, Chloe, like my actions do not reflect how, how I, feel I feel about, about you. you. He was like, mm. he was like, I love you so much. And he's like, and I know that for the past few years, my actions have not reflected that love, but I do love you. And he was like, regardless of like, you know, how much I've embarrassed you and all of the things I've done to you. Like, yeah, I love keep you. bringing I'm up like, the past. I'm like, wait, dude, like the fact that he literally straight up said like my actions don't reflect how I feel. I was like, that's bullshit. Like, what are you talking about? I know. I didn't know that this is his third baby mama. So he had a baby mama before Chloe. Oh, I knew that. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so I think Jordan he left her. Craig. Didn't he leave? Um, I don't want to say this because I don't alleged. know if this is true. It's alleged, but I for think Chloe. So he left her for Chloe. I well, I think you're right because I did the research. And so they started Jordan and Tristan started dating in 2014 and she had the baby in 2016 and then him and Chloe started dating in 2016 and they had a daughter in 2018 there's like a two-year pattern it's like on to the next yeah every two years but the funniest tweet that I saw today was (laughs) it was like at this point Tristan Thompson is more known for cheating on Chloe Kardashian than he is for um being an NBA player (laughs) yeah I kind of forgot that he was I kind of forgot he was like an athlete I thought he was just like a certified douchebag like (laughs) I thought he was just associated with the Kardashians and that's how he got famous. This whole time we all thought that like Scott Disick was famous for being a (laughs) douchebag, but it's actually Tristan Thompson. (laughs) Oh, poor Scott. Dude, I forgot that Courtney and Travis are engaged. Yeah, me too. I really forgot for a minute. So that wedding will be coming soon. Can't wait to not be invited. (laughs) Um, A a tragic, travesty and tragic. I think we're what you were combining. I think you're right. Something tragic happened. Yes. Sorry about that, guys. We were just rudely interrupted by the fire alarm. Um, <laughs> that was super... <laughs> we were a little it's terrified. Raining now. Well, like, all of a sudden, the fire alarm started going off, and Abby and I were like, uh, and Peter was like, it's fine. And I was like, <laughs> do we need to evacuate because it's raining out, and I, I really guess don't want my hair test. to get wet. Okay. It was just a test. Just a test. But it was very rude. Anyways. Anyways, I was about to um, mention that freaking Betty White is dead. It's so sad. It's... Honestly, you want to know what really breaks my heart is that she died at 99 years old. Yeah. On December 31st, the last day of the year, and two weeks before her 100th birthday. Isn't that insane? Like, Mr. Marion kept saying, because I really could not get over it. He was like, well, she lived a long, good life, blah, blah, blah. Like, and I'm like, I don't care. Like, Shut I, the fuck up. I want her to turn 100, <laughs> damn it. Yeah. No, I agree, because you know what's really sad? I saw this, like... Um, magazine cover. I don't know if it was like People or 
us or whatever the fuck it was, but it was like celebrating like Betty White turning a hundred. Like she was like on the the cover of it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's turning a hundred. And then she literally died a few days after that. I was like, what That's the so fuck? Sad. I guess there's rumors, speculations. People are they'll make what is it mountains out of mill holes what is that saying people are like oh she got the booster three days before she died like the booster killed her but her agent quickly put that down and was okay. like she died peacefully in her sleep which honestly i think is the best way to go i hope i die in my sleep yeah i swear to god if i don't no i, I, <laughs> I know it's crazy i know and supposedly her last bird was alan or something Who's her husband? Who's her husband? Stop. Isn't that cute? He died, Supposedly, he died. yeah. Dude, do you want to know what's so annoying? Is that ugh, almost? Mm, I feel like majority of the time, the husbands always die first. Oh, always. It's not. I'm not prepared to do that. Like well, I'm just not. If you think about it, it makes sense because men are way more unhealthy. Like they eat yeah. like shit. They <laughs> usually drink more. Um, they like are lazy. They, yeah, they like smoke they don't cigars. Go to the they don't go to the gym. They don't go to the doctor. They don't take care of themselves. They don't really shower enough. What? There's just like what a lot. Are- I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're just shitting on they men. Fucking, they no. fucking sit on the side of the street, you know, drinking drinking a bunch of bourbon. It's, they just a the fucking. They just don't take preventative care. They don't really, really know what they're doing. They like, yeah. I feel Honestly. like they probably like do drugs more. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now you're they're just all, talking out of your ass. They're all alcoholics. Like it's just it's classic. No, but I really do think that they are overall less healthy. I think that has something to it has to do, have something to do with it. Maybe I do know that most men don't go to the doctor like their annual checkup, and I feel like most wives have to like beg their husbands to go which mr man is a prime example of that like he didn't go to the doctor for like a few years and then i finally made him an appointment and he went thank god but i was like or like what is wrong with men men who like (laughs) michael told me this because i he came over i made him dinner this was like a year ago and he like admitted to me that like sometimes he'll eat like he'll get like fast food and then he'll come home and I'll like make dinner. Oh, we we all knew that. <laughs> yeah, and apparently everyone knew that. But like that's like a common thing that like a husband will do. They'll get like a Big Mac yeah. and they'll come home and eat dinner, which that can't be great. You know what I mean? Mm, definitely not. Um, but yeah, no, it's like pretty well known. It's like sad. But it is sad. She was a legend. She was a legend. A little, a little cutie nugget. R. I. P. So we have been binge watching TV because Abby and I have <laughs> We just had like a rough few weeks. So we've just been getting caught up on everything. Me, um, I watch TV. I know, Abby. So I proud. was so surprised. I texted you and I was like, have you been watching Emily in Paris? And you were like, yeah. And I was like, wait, what? Because I, I know like, you, you never like, watch TV. I know you You probably didn't think that I was going to say yes, but I was already like six episodes deep when you texted me. I was so shocked by that. I was I expecting know. you to be like, no. And I was gonna, and I had a whole plan to be like, you really should watch it. Like blah, blah, blah. And the then podcast. You, you were like, yes. I was like, oh. Yeah. I know. I was late too and just like that, but I'm so glad that I'm caught up because yeah. love, but love and I have a love hate relationship with both these shows. Okay. So Emily in Paris, did you watch season one? I did. All? You did. Yeah. What did you think about now that we're all caught up on it? What did you think about season two compared to season one? Um, I'm not going to lie. I lost interest in Emily in Paris too. Um, about halfway through, and then Shannon had to nudge me to finish it so that we can talk about it. <laughs> and um, I still don't fully remember how it ends. I had it on today so I could like re spark my memory, but I obviously liked season one better. I think just season ones of everything are always better, yeah, in my opinion. But I was excited that it came out. I had high hopes for it, but. I think they got a lot of shit for season one. And I don't remember why, but I remember seeing it in, in like the tabloids. So they were trying, I don't know, but I liked it. It wasn't my favorite. I liked season one better, but I thought it was cute. Yeah. I think it's like cute. I think it's some shit because it's definitely not like a good show. It's not like critically acclaimed. It's definitely a little stupid and weird. And people think that she's like an annoying portrayal of what like Americans Let's just are. Say, I would never be friends with Emily. <laughs> I like like her. Like I do. I think she's very cute. And obviously, she's cute, yeah. Like whatever. Like thin, which is like annoying. But um, 
I just think season one, I feel like was so good. Cause well, first off, obviously Gabriel is like the hottest person I've ever seen in my life. Like that's so, the chef, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so like you kind of just watch it for him, which makes sense. Even though I kind of like the Matthew Cadeau guy. Kind of, I don't know why. Is that her new boyfriend? No, the guy that was like, um, the guy that was like the fashion designer's like Assistant? nephew or whatever. Oh. Hmm. I thought he was cute. I'm really Anyways, bad with names. But I thought the first season was, even though, I mean, it's not like a great show, but I thought, I thought the first season was good because of the whole like, will they, won't they thing. It's like, you know, she likes yeah. the chef and he has a thing for her, but he's dating the blonde girl, Camille. And like, you really like her because she's really nice and fun. And you like know that something's gonna end up happening and then they end up hooking up. And it's like the whole season, you're kind of waiting for that. I feel like season two was like a undoing of that. It's almost like it starts off with them like kind of like trying to figure out if they're gonna be together. And then Camille, which I think is fucking genius. I like her. I liked her character a lot. Um, yeah, like her her mom gives her that advice because her and um, if, you haven't, if you haven't watched season two yet, we'll for, probably skip over this. But um, basically what happens is Emily ends up hooking up with Gabriel, who is Camille's boyfriend or whatever. And then like in season two, Camille's pissed because she finds out about it and she's like pissed. She's not talking to either of them. And her mom gets her advice. She's like, do you still like this boy? And she goes, yes. She goes, all right, well, here's what you're going to do. Like, here's my plan. And she basically tells her, tells her you rejecting both of them and like not talking to them is going to push them closer together. So like you need to befriend Emily again, like become best friends with her again. And she's going to feel so guilty. And then you have to be like, all right, let's make a pact that neither of us will ever go for Gabriel again. And then, so smart. and then Emily obviously feels so guilty and she's like, okay, I'll do whatever it takes to be this girl's friends again. Like I, screwed her over so she agrees to it and then secretly the whole time Camille is like good then she apologizes to Gabriel she's like I'm sorry for being so mad like I know we were broken up whatever and then, then the whole time she secretly is like vying for him so like throughout the the show they end up kind of getting back together at the end of the season um because she does that and I thought it was fucking so genius like evil but genius oh I, I would totally I respect it I mean it was her boyfriend yeah. first yeah I know 100% agreed but yeah the show is definitely like a little like silly and like quirky and weird and they definitely make French people look shitty like and lazy <laughs> and narcissistic and, and mean. sexist and mean <laughs> like she gets into work at like 8am and the rest of the office like strolls in at 11 like I feel like if I was a French person I'd fucking hate that show yeah, it, it probably does portray them badly, but honestly, they are so much more relaxed about like just like work in general and work yeah. life balance. Like I think America could take some notes. Hundred um, percent. All right, and just like that, okay, you're caught up. I am. I I'm am not hundred percent caught up. I'm one episode off. But okay, what are your thoughts? Okay, so I've talked about this before that I I haven't watched the whole Sex in the City saga in full i've you know seen episodes here and there from each season you're a new supporter i'm a new supporter but i kind of and i've watched both the movies i don't know if that but i understand like i understand what each character is like like i like know who, are, who yeah, they are and right. like what they you know are like <laughs> i don't know what the fuck the producers were thinking <laughs> in this season but it's like Sex in the City is like a classic. Right. M maybe that's a bit much for me to say, but this was a movie from what, the 90s? Yeah, like the started. show started, I want to say it was either 90s or early 2000s, one of the two. Probably both. I don't know. Who knows? But it's an old show. So to have a reboot in this day and age, I think the producers were like, all right, we need to win over this generation. Yeah, like a newer generation. Which I don't think you should have to win over anyone. Like if you can't respect and appreciate and love Sex in the City for the way that it then was, I don't want to fucking talk to you. Then, anyways. then don't watch it don't because watch. the producers of and just like that, literally. I mean, I'm still gonna watch it, but it's like <laughs> they decided they were just gonna throw in everything, everything, every little thing that they could to make it relatable to this generation. Yes hundred percent and, and i think it's doing a disservice to the characters yes it it really is like um samantha well, no not samantha miranda carrie what's the other one charlotte. charlotte charlotte um spoiler alert charlotte's daughter is in the process of transitioning to yeah. a guy um what's what's the other girl's name who's a lesbian now 
um, Miranda. <laughs> I forgot her name. Miranda is a lesbian now and an alcoholic. And Carrie is honestly, I just realized I don't like Carrie. <laughs> She's like the neediest person ever. <laughs> I'll get to that in a second, but you know, it's fine to, you know, I think, I think what they, their vision was like, they want it to represent, you know, things, struggles that, you know, were taboo in the past that are no longer taboo. Right. Like their intentions were good, but the way that they delivered it is just so too much, like too yeah, forced, too, in too your strong, face. too in your face. Yeah. And it's changing the whole plot. I agree. I think that, um... Again, like I get it. Like they're trying to be like culturally relevant and stuff. And I do think obviously there were some things cause it's, it's a different generation now, right? So when the show first came out, like life was just different. So I think them trying to make it a little bit more relatable to, you know, people today makes sense. But mm -hmm. I think they tried to do it all at once. They were like, boom, 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 boom. Like, so let's throw every single thing that's happened the past year, like the pandemic, this, that masks, like everything. And let's just like throw it into like the first episode. And I was like, shit, like, where did this all come from? And I don't really necessarily have an issue with all of that. But what I think my problem is, is that they started focusing so much more on like the way that the world is and like the advancements and all this stuff that they're not even focusing on like the plot lines of the characters right. as much. And I feel like when you watched Sex in the City, like from the early 2000s, they never really talked about what was going on in the world. They weren't like, oh yeah, we just got a new um, like mayor or like this whatever just got put into place. They kind of just like lived their lives. And it was like, you know, four single girls in the city in their thirties who are like dating guys, drinking Cosmos, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they never really talked about what else was going on in the world. Cause that wasn't really the point. And I don't like, it, it, I don't hate the fact that, you know, if it was always kind of a politically focused show or like a culturally relevant show, that's fine. But I just feel like it wasn't the show like I fell in love with. And I feel right. like sometimes when I watch TV, I want to like escape from the world that we're in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't need to be reminded that we're in a pandemic and that, you know, life is X, Y, and Z. But I feel like when you're watching TV and you're like watching that, it's like, I might as well just watch the news, <laughs> which I try to avoid. <laughs> Literally. I do love, I think it's hilarious. Maybe because I'm biased. I think it's hilarious. Like Carrie has a podcast. Yeah. But that's like, funny. Uh, it's also she's like, a writer yeah so also like why the fuck does she have a podcast like I thought that was weird I was like okay yeah I get it's it. not like, Carrie yeah it's not that's the thing like not I don't her. have an, I don't have an issue with someone having a podcast obviously <laughs> <laughs> but like like they're just trying so hard they're like oh podcasts are the thing these days we have to have her have a podcast I'm like Carrie never would have fucking had one that's no. not what she does she had a sex column and it was it wasn't like super raunchy and gross and they want it her was, to be raunchy yeah on it was just like a sex column where she talked about you know being a girl and like this is what you go through in relationships and when the guy's like not answering your calls or whatever like she, they don't have to make it this like big thing it's, right. it's annoying anyways it go watch it it's a great show <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm gonna keep watching it Go back and watch the old ones. It's so much better. All right. Anyways, on to onward and what is it? Upward. Upward. Onward and upward. <laughs> onward, upward, and onward. What is this, what is the saying? Onward and upward. Upward and onward. Onward and upward. We didn't record for the past two weeks, but that didn't mm -hmm. mean that we didn't have opinions. And <laughs> God, do we have a lot. I feel like there's been a lot of annoying things that people have done on social media during the holidays. And while mm -hmm. we're past the holidays, I don't think we, we should 100% be over how fucking annoying, tone deaf, and needy the people have been on Instagram. So we just wanted to break down <laughs> a few things that have really annoyed us and that people should stop doing. Do you wanna start? Um. Okay. So, mm, influencers posting their most liked posts of 2021. Yes. Um, not great. Narcissists. It's not good. Weird flex. Weird flex. I. But not okay. I was sitting there and like I said on, you know, some painkillers wasn't feeling my best. I came across a post of this influencer I follow and she was like, here are my five top five most like posts of 2021. And I like thought it was a joke. Like I thought she was like, oh, I was like, okay, haha, she's being funny. And then all of a sudden I kept scrolling and I saw another girl do it and then another girl and I was like, holy fuck, it's a thing. Like what? It's definitely an influencer thing. I don't think the average Sally is doing it. I hope not. No. I feel like if you're a guy listening to this or if you're a girl and you're like, what are you talking about? I haven't seen that 
on my timeline at all, then you probably don't follow enough influencers because it's literally like an influencer it's like, thing. No, it's like fucking like Olivia Culpo, like the prime, oh, yeah. the prime pepper pep, perpetuator of <laughs> the perpetrator. I don't fucking know what I'm trying to say. Perp Both. something, a, per, a perp basically. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a perv <laughs> all of the peas <laughs> pee pee okay she's like she, i think she was the first one i saw do it and she's like here are my top like five most liked posts of 2021 and i'm like bitch i don't fucking care <laughs> and it's like i saw these posts once i don't need to see them again and then what's worse is she broke down like a whole paragraph dissecting what it meant so she was like so from what i gather from you guys is likes you really like when i post pictures of me and my boyfriend oh you really like posters pic- you really of like my when family I post pictures of like me in a bikini <laughs> and you really like when i post pictures of me traveling i'm like shut the fuck up like what are you talking about it's so just i don't even know like ego maniacal if that's a fucking word and like i'm all for having Egotistical. a physical <laughs> i don't I can't know what talk. you just you just made up the word. hey welcome to drinks after work i like to make up every single word that i say and none of it's actually in the dictionary but it's um. insane and i have no problem with girls being confident and flexing whatever but to like let us like but to remind us that you get a lot of likes on your pictures and to break it down for us into like a fucking van diagram to be like here is the the picture with the most likes and therefore you must like x y and z as my fans like no i don't want (laughs) to see that you want to know what i hate also is uh, there's this new trend and uh, this is probably gonna offend a lot of people because a lot of people do it and i'm not gonna lie i posted one on our story but it was only because i was trying to get the word out that we exist but it's like those little prompts where it's like show a picture of a time you were happy oh my god and then, and then when you click on it you can like see public posts yes. of everyone and it'll say like 100 and 1200 thousand others like that did it and i'm like dude i don't care show me a picture of your dog i don't care yeah like just post the photo of your dog and don't put that stupid little thing on. it's just like an excuse to like post a photo fu- just post whatever the fuck you want to post and just, don't follow like yeah. a trend or you know what post something and don't give anyone a fucking explanation you like <laughs> yes. here is a foot pic like go for it like go to town <laughs> no, not for free like, no 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 not, that's true maybe not a foot pic that's a bit much we don't give <laughs> those away bit. for free but post a picture of your fucking dog or a, a selfie and you don't need to tell anyone why you're posting it just fucking post it and be just like you know what it. i thought i looked hot in this here you go bitches I'd, you're welcome i'd respect that so much more i know and you know the ones that i love that i love the most it's like when everyone tries to be like fucking like deep and shit like, <laughs> <laughs> oh no okay. it's like post a picture of a time that you were pretending to be happy like you had it all together but deep down like everything was crashing down around you and it's like a girl like who's like there's like a tear like one tear going down her face but she's like trying to look like happy and it's like a super moody selfie but she just kind of looks a little constipated and i'm just like dude like what the fuck's going on I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, it's fine. We're we're, we're really we're, nice people. <laughs> I swear. We're not that mean. We just had a lot of free free time to make fun of me. <laughs> and honestly, it's a little deserved. Yeah, and honestly, the saddest people in the room are definitely us. <laughs> so it's it's fine. Spot the lie. It's gonna be fine. Um, another thing that I think is really annoying when girls post pictures of every fucking christmas present that they received no, christmas <laughs> just like rubbing it in people's faces like look at this dior bag i got look at this louis vuitton keychain that i got okay so a piece of me a piece of me i love the youtube christmas hauls okay. if you grew up on youtube you you grew up watching olivia jade before she got canceled her christmas hauls because it was two reasons one i lived vicariously through her at one point and then another point is um if you got money for christmas or a gift card for christmas then you can like see what people got and like go buy that yourself Mm. but i will say that's youtube on instagram i think it's weird um i think it's fine if you want to post like the the picture like if your boyfriend got you a louis vuitton bag like okay post the picture of the box you don't need to post a picture of the bag. Yeah. I think that's weird. If someone really cares, they'll DM you and be like, oh my God, what's inside? That's true. But like, 
Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think the hall thing is fun because I think people just like to watch people like unwrap yeah. things. And especially we all know Olivia Jade, obviously very like privileged, has all this shit. So I feel you're kind of like the vicarious thing. I don't necessarily hate it if, I don't hate it if it's an influencer that's like literally doing it to like put a fucking video out there and like that's like getting their coin, fine. I also don't really hate it if like you said, if it's a girl that maybe her boyfriend got her, you know, the Burberry trench coat that she's always wanted and she's like so happy and she's like, this has been my dream, fine. <laughs> I don't like, I no lie, saw this bitch that I follow and she's not like an influencer. She's just mm-hmm. like a girl that I like kind of know. Sorry if you're listening, but <laughs> oh God. she literally one year posted not one or two stories, but eight consecutive stories on Christmas day. I was like, Merry fucking Christmas. Opened up my Instagram of every single item that her boyfriend purchased for her. And it wasn't like one big photo. It was like, she posted a picture of the Gucci loafers he got her. And then the next picture was a like Cartier watch. And then the next picture the was fuck? like a, fucking trench coat and then the next picture was like a Prada umbrella or like something that didn't even know existed then it was a fucking Prada umbrella <laughs> then it was like a Himalayan cat that it was a puppy okay. <laughs> but like she literally posted like eight different pictures like all with like different filters on them and like to her story of all this designer shit that he got her and I was like that is just like so tacky it is tacky yeah. Ugh, don't do that some things are okay to keep to yourself there are some things that like maybe you can share with your friend group chat yeah, or, maybe, or make a close friends list and yeah. post it on your close friends. On yes, Insta. and make it a fr- close friends list of people that you fucking hate, and then but just add like, us because I want to see. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually smart. Imagine, okay, hear me up. You All make your a, haters. You make a close friends list but you only add people that you really really dislike, and then you post it <laughs> all the fucking time, and it's just like all this like. <laughs> <laughs> annoying shit and like all this like fun stuff you're doing and annoying shit and just like selfies just uh, to, like get under their skin that'd be funny genius and then the person would be wondering like why am i on their why am i on their close friends list yeah yeah because you don't get notified it's just one day you see a green see thing and you're like mm. and you're kind of like oh okay like they consider me a close friend that's kind of cute so we mentioned earlier new year new nose new year new nose i have a lot of questions and i feel like everyone else probably has a lot of questions yeah i was like i feel like i wanted to put like a picture on our instagram to like show people that i had nose jobs i wasn't just like randomly talking about on the podcast and having Mm -hmm. people be like what the fuck but i did get a rhinoplasty on december 20th so literally like five days before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I've been wanting to do this for like my whole life. Yeah, Yeah. like years. As long as I've known you. Yeah, and it was honestly like a good experience um, considering like obviously it's not fun to like (laughs) go into surgery and like have a cast and shit. But I did want to talk about it because I do think like, I don't know if any of our listeners are considering getting a rhinoplasty or if it's something that, people just want to know more about but it definitely was like a process and there's a lot of things that people don't tell you and a lot that you don't know till you actually go through it so I wanted to kind of just break down what it looks like for people oh okay so kind of you (laughs) wait I have a question though but did you ever get cold feet um like the night before like a couple days leading up to it or even the morning of where you're like oh my god am I really doing this like not really no but I think good though I think because it's because it's something I've always wanted. Mm-hmm. Like I honestly got more cold feet before I got my lips done because I was almost really? like, yeah, because I never, I never really had an issue with my lips. Like not that I had like whatever, they were like just regular, but I think I just was like, oh, I saw one of my friends get it done. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to do it. And then like a month later I went in and then I was like, wait, like, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. I ended up liking it. But I think like, I remember when I was a freshman in high school and someone wrote on my fucking form spring that I had a big nose and I literally Aww. went home crying. <laughs> And ever since that moment, I was like, I need to get a nose job. And it was just like an irrational thing. Like, I know, like, I'm not trying to say like, oh, I had this like horrible nose or anything. It's just a personal thing I've always wanted. So I think I finally like made a move where I was like, I'm going to book a consultation. I'm going to meet with a like doctor that specializes in this. And she just made me feel so comfortable and like validated. And she was like, what you want, I can hundred percent do. Like, you're not asking for anything like crazy. It, it can be done. It's going to be easy. It's going to be simple. And she made me feel very just like comfortable. And yeah. I loved her. And I think I also, because I've known I've always wanted this, I'm like, it's either in me now or 
another time. So I might as well just do it now. And I also knew it was going to be like Christmas time. And I was going to be like just chilling with my family all week. So I was like, it's perfect. So, but you had to plan it so that you could fly. Yes. Before Scottsdale. Exactly. So what was that? It was like how many days before? So they say, um, they say like the absolute, absolute minimum is a week, but you really should wait like a week and a half to two weeks. So I waited a week and a half. Um, and it was fine just because, so when you get a nose job, what people don't, I mean, maybe they, if you conceptually think about it, it makes sense. Your nose gets so inflamed and swollen and like stuffy. So if you get on a plane too fast, it'll like really, really hurt like the pressure of the plane and it'll make your nose even more swollen and like messed up. If that makes sense. Would it be permanent? No, if you went on it, uh, I don't think it would be permanent. It's just more like it would make the healing process longer and oh, be very okay. uncomfortable. So, like when you get a rhinoplasty, you basically like they're going in and they either break your nose or they just shave it down. They just shave mine down, so they didn't break yeah, it. You got lucky. And then they put a cast over it. You keep the cast on for a week, and then after that, they remove the cast. And then from that point forward, like it's in the healing phase. What? <laughs> What I didn't know was that when you have the cast on your nose, you can't wash your face really. Because <gasps> oh you can't God. get it wet, right? Yeah. And they don't tell you that. Or she did tell me that, but you don't know that before you go in. So I had this thing on my nose and I like love to wash my face. Like I like yeah. to do my cleanser, like my whole like skincare routine. And all week long, like I would wake up every morning and feel gross, like body shower and wouldn't be able to wash my face. And by day like five of not washing your face. So I would like take makeup wipes and like, try like wipe around yeah. it but it's still not the same as using like a cleanser yeah so by the time I took it off I just felt so gross I remember like that first shower I was like this is the best thing that could have ever happened <laughs> to me but then I also felt like because there's a cast on your nose for a whole week so you get like some blackheads and like you know what I mean because it's just like oh, kind of dirt like there's like yeah. just dirt stuck in there which makes sense but it was just like not the most pleasant experience so they don't warn you about the blackheads <laughs> they don't warn you about the blackheads <laughs> Like Which you like, take your cast I'm, off and I'm your sure nose most people are like it's covered. not a fucking big deal but like I hate blackheads <laughs> so I was like fuck they're not easy to remove sometimes no they're really not they don't you don't account for that and then well your skin looks good for not the, washing thank it thank you there's makeup on it but thank you um the other thing that they don't tell you and this is probably like the most important thing and like advice I'd give to someone so when you get your nose done you they, they basically like obviously they're peeling back your skin they're shaving down your nose and then they're putting the skin back so you're very like your body is like very yeah sorry (laughs) trigger warning um (sighs) your body's like not happy with you like not pleased and you usually will get pretty bruised around like your cheeks in the Mm -hmm. beginning like around your eyes um I was lucky I didn't get super bruised but I did get very very swollen your nose is going to be extremely swollen and the swelling does not truly go down for six to 12 months. And Damn. I didn't know that. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and luckily, like my, um, I went to this place. It's called the DeRosa Center. It's right on Newbury Street. If you're interested in getting a consultation, Dr. DeRosa is like the sweetest, nicest angel. Her, she does it. And then her husband is the anesthesiologist. Mm-hmm. They're like so amazing. They've been doing this forever. She's very good at what she does but she did a good job letting me know she was like when you get the cast taken off your nose you're going to be super disappointed most people are because your nose is going to be so swollen it'll look like bigger than it was before you get the nose job so imagine like not knowing that and you get this operation done basically and then all of a sudden (laughs) you're like my nose looks bigger than it did before and it doesn't really look different and she was like it's going to take you like three months to start being like wow it's like looking smaller and it looks better and then she was like the tip of your nose like stays swollen for the longest and it's gonna look very like big Mm. she's like that's the very last thing to develop because it's like that's where all of like the swelling like stays because it like starts from the top down it'll start going away so just know that if you're gonna do it it's gonna be like I won't really see the full results for 12 to 18 months. That's insane. Which Are you is taking crazy. pictures, like progress photos? Yeah, I just have like a, I have a photo, album. an album called Nose that. Progress. <laughs> it's like, there's like two pictures of my nose before and then mm-hmm. it's like every day I'll take one of it now. Okay, every day's a bit much. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to do it every day. You should day. do like once a week once or once a week. Yeah. Because I can't, because I'll be like, oh, I don't really notice a difference. Right. And like some days you'll wake up and it'll be like, look good. And then all of a sudden, like an hour later, it'll look really swollen again. It just kind of like goes up and down. So when you had the cast on, because I feel like this, I'm the type of person where 
I have contact lenses because I, and I know everyone's like, you'll get used to it. But like wearing glasses, like I don't like seeing something in front of me. Yeah. I don't know how I wear sunglasses, but I can't wear glasses. But I feel like having that cast on my nose, like you can see it, right? The cast, like, like in your of. vision. Yeah. Not, not like bad. No. It's like a small cast. It's like, I feel covers like that would your drive nose. me crazy. It's not bad. Honestly, you're also on like pain meds and you're just kind of like laying there and like you kind of just have like no will to live. The worst thing about the whole process, honestly, like I was in pain for the first two days, like substantial pain. But mm-hmm. after that, it's really more just uncomfortable. Like you can't breathe out of your nose because like- That's it's, so scary. It gets like was so it? inflamed. Yeah, like it just, you almost feel like you have a really bad cold. So you have to sleep with your mouth open, which I know it's like, oh, boohoo. But like, yeah. I hate sleeping with my mouth open. I don't even know if I do. It's like a whole painful, it's like not fun. It's like more just uncomfortable because you can't breathe out of your nose. And like- Did you have to take like melatonin? Every yeah, night. I take melatonin every night to make myself fall asleep. I bet I do that. Anyways. And you just like sleep with your head <laughs> elevated and like all that shit. So, so I guess if you're a stomach sleeper, don't get a, ba- a nose job. Yeah, if you're a stomach <laughs> sleeper, just fucking forget about it. Um, but yeah, and you want to go to someone that's like reputable. Like I did my research for literally two years before I did this. So, mm-hmm. um, moral of the story: if you guys are, if it's something that anyone's considering or has questions about, feel free to DM us. Happy to give any advice I have because there's just like so much shit online that you'll read and a lot of it's not right. So yeah. you want to make sure that like, if you're doing something, like I was literally reading this some article someone posted the other day and someone commented and was like, I got my, na- my nose shaved down, but like they, like they didn't even like do a surgery. They just gave me a little bit of like, local anesthesia I was like that's not fucking true like what are you talking about so I know you can like change the shape of your nose with like what filler yeah so if you so if you're a baby like me I feel like I'd probably do that yeah you can like get a liquid rhinoplasty where they put filler in your like in places in your nose to make it appear smaller but they're not actually like changing your nose right that makes sense yeah so if you're just like oh I have a little bit of like a dip in my nose but like I don't think it's too big or whatever then you can do that and it can make your nose look like 10 times different which is cool. Mm. So yeah. The more you know. The more you know. Well, that's all we have for this week. Tune in next week. We have a very special guest. Oh, I'm so excited. 2022 is the year of gut health. So stay tuned for that. That's all we're that's all we're yeah, gonna say. We're gonna yeah, that's all we're gonna say. She is someone who knows about gut health and I know Abby and I really struggle with knowing what the fuck is going on in our stomachs and like mm-hmm. what we should be eating and what's going on. So she's gonna be joining us next week. Definitely stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for listening. We're so excited to be back and we will not be taking any breaks anytime soon. So you guys are stuck with us for the whole year. <laughs> Knock on freaking wood. Knock on freaking wood. All See right. you next See week, you guys bitches. Next oh, week. like, comment, subscribe. Bye. Share with your friends. <laughs> Bye.